Oh man, this coming week could be huge for Palantir's future. Let's take a look at the calendar. We see that April 21st has been circled in green already, but there's three more days in this week that I'll pay attention to. 27th, 28th, and 29th. Wait, 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 is this guy just making some BS clickbaity video of how Palantir is going to the moon? Well, no. I'm looking at Palantir's website and there's no demo day, there's no earnings this week. So what the is this about? Welcome back, mindful investors. In this video, I'm going to talk about these three dates and why I can build a solid foundation to Palantir's future. There are a couple things you need to know about me is that I'm not a news reporter, a YouTuber, nor a day trader. I'm an investor. I have skin in the game in all the stocks I talk about. For example, I have 10k shares in Palantir since IPO at about $10, and last week I loaded up another 10k shares. So things mean that much more to me. I'm not gonna stretch my videos past the 8 minute mark just so I can add some mid rolls in. I value your time as much as mine. And this is real money I'm investing with, not the YouTube money I use for marketing. As a mindful investor, I believe you have to look everywhere for valuable information. Not just dependent on a certain YouTuber or a certain news article. We kind of have to align all the dots to see if it makes sense or not. Whenever we look at a company, we have to look at the micros, the macros, the landscape, and the future. There are so many times I see people digging through the balance sheet, but ultimately, does it even matter? because balance sheet and the history is behind us. The stock price usually reflects what's in front of us. So we can't really look at these numbers and just justify things that way, right? We have to see if things really line up and if the company vision is actually taking place. So we have to pay attention to the partnerships and where is going ahead of us. One of Palantir's recent partners is IBM. They signed this contract on February 8th to help businesses easily deploy powerful and open AI applications. This leads us back to this date, February 21st. That's when IBM reported their earnings, and it was a blast to say the least. If we just pull out the ticker symbol IBM, what we see here under the dividend and yield is 4.58%. It's definitely not a growth company anymore. In fact, from 2013 to 2018, they had 22 straight quarters of negative revenue growth. And suddenly, magically, things just turned around the past quarter. There could be many reasons for this, but one of the reasons is Palantir and how they implemented their AI system into the cloud applications. Just how much effect did they have? Nobody really knows. But what we do know is that Palantir has had their hands on their data for the past couple quarters. Now we'll talk about these three days right here. The 27th, 28th, and 29th. There are three major companies which are reporting their earnings on these three dates, and all three of them are Palantir's latest partners. Number one is 3M. They're reporting on the 27th. Number two is Fujitsu, and they're reporting on the 28th. Number three is Amazon, which reports earnings on the 29th. And how is Amazon related? It's because they partner with AWS on the cloud systems. Hit the like and subscribe button if you didn't know about these three dates. It will greatly support the channel. Thank you. So I think this week will really show what Palantir can do in the business sector. But wait a minute, these are all kind of new partnerships, right? So how does it all reflect so fast? Let's take a look at when these partnerships were formed. So as we talked about before, the IBM partnership was on February 8th. And then the Fujitsu partnership is on January 6th. AWS partnership is on March 9th. Let's write these down so we can refer to it in the future. We have March 9th for AWS, January 6th for Fujitsu, 3M was February 23rd, and we might as well write the IBM, right? IBM was on February 8th. So these are the major partnerships they formed in 2021. Exactly why does it matter? Doesn't it take a lot of time to integrate and deploy these systems? Well, yes and no. If we look at Palantir's business model right here, the part that we care about the most is the commercial foundry side. This government Gotham side, I don't really care for. This part can sustain itself. The major growth is the commercial side foundry. It says right here, in the acquisition stage, 
Palantir bears all the pilot costs to bring in new customers, which means that they aren't getting any money up front for all these services, the cloud, the on-premise, the professional services. So all this money is out of pocket. But in the expansion phase, as the pilot has proved successful, Palantir continues the vertical integration of the software within the organization. So this phase is where they sign the contracts. If we look at the case for Fujitsu, they actually had strategic alliance with Palantir back in June of 2020. But ultimately, they signed the contract on January 6th. So a whole seven months of this acquisition phase before they signed the contract to expand with Fujitsu. Do you think that's the norm that'll take seven months of free labor just to sign a contract? Well, just like everything we do in life, the more we do it, the faster we get, right? Even though all these companies are so different, but they have the parallels. What I'm saying is that even though these contracts was just signed over the past three months, they've been working with the data for the past six to nine months, and they've proven success with the AI and machine learning integrations, therefore signing the real contracts. It'll be quite interesting to see all these earnings this week. I mean, ultimately, these are the proof of concepts, right? If all three of these companies on top of IBM last week report blowout results, I think it's game over for the commercial sector. Just think about it. If I'm a competitor in this space of these four companies and I see just suddenly how the growth ramp up while saving money, that's ridiculous. I'll sign the contract with Palantir in a second. That's how much I don't want to fall behind. I mean, there's no way I can develop this AI technology that they've been doing it for 20 years overnight or over next quarter. We'll just be burning money. Why not hire the best that has proven results, right? And this mindset doesn't just apply for the competition. It applies for any business across any sector that deals with a whole bunch of data that they're not sure of. The food supply chains, the cloud allocations, even law firms are using them. Just think about what they can do with the data. They'll suddenly become the holy grail of data analytics. The game is over. We'll see how all this plays out. Drop me a like and subscribe if you found any value in the video. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.